Our liturgy this morning begins in the Book of Common Prayer on page 80, page 80. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 105, Psalm 105. Beginning on page 738 of the Book of Common Prayer, we will read the first 22 verses of Psalm 105, page 738. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord in his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments will prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac, which he established as a statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying to you will I give the land of Canaan to be your allotted inheritance. When they were few in number, of little account and sojourners in the land, wandering from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another, let no one oppress them, and rebuke kings for their sake, saying, Do not touch my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Then he called for a famine in the land, and destroyed the supply of he sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters, his neck they put in an iron collar, until his prediction came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The rulers of the peoples set him free. He set him as a master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions to instruct his princes according to his will, and to teach his elders wisdom. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is from the book of Judges. Samson went down to Timnah, and at Timnah, he saw one of the daughters of the Philistine. Then he came up and told his father, I saw one of the daughters of the Philistines at Timnah. Now get her for me as a wife. But his father and mother said to him, Is there not a woman among the daughters of your kinsmen or among all our people that you must go take a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? But Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. His father and mother did not know that it was from the Lord, for he was seeking an occasion against the Philistines. At that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then Samson went down with his father and mother to Timnah, and he came to the vineyards of Timnah 
And behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he tore the lion asunder as one tears a kid. And he had nothing in his hand. But he did not tell his father or mother what he had done. Then he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. And after a while he returned to take her. And he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees in the body of the lion and honey. He scraped it out into his hands and went on eating as he went. He came to his father and mother and gave some to them, and they ate. But he did not tell them that he had taken the honey from the carcass of the lion. And his father went down to the woman. And Samson made a feast there, for so the young men used to do. And when the people saw him, they brought thirty companions to be with him. And Samson said to them, Let me now put a riddle to you. If you can tell me what it is within seven days of the feast, and find it out, I will give you thirty linen garments and thirty festal garments. But if you cannot tell me what it is, you shall give me thirty linen garments and thirty festal garments. And they said to him, Put your riddle, that we may hear it. And he said to them, Out of the eater came something to eat, out of the strong came something sweet. And they could not in three days tell what the riddle was. On the fourth day they said to Samson's wife, Entice your husband to tell us what the riddle is, lest we burn you and your father's house, house with fire. You, have you invited us here to impoverish us? And Samson's wife wept before him and said, You only hate me, you do not love me. You have put a riddle to my countrymen, and you have not told me what it is. And he said to her, Behold, I have not told my father nor my mother, and shall I tell you? She wept before him the seven days that their feast lasted. And on the seventh day he told her, because she pressed him hard. Then she told the riddle to her countrymen, and the men of the city said to him on the seventh day before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? And he said to them, If you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have found out my riddle. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon, and killed thirty men of the town, and took their spoil, and gave the festal garments to those who had told the riddle. In hot anger he went back to his father's house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 11. Canticle number 11 is found on page 87. 87. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the people. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our next lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles. Gazing at Stephen, all who sat in the council saw that his face was like the face of an angel. And the high priest said, Is this so? And Stephen said, Brethren and fathers, hear me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran, and said to him, 
Depart from your land and from your kindred, and go into the land which I will show you. Then he departed from the land of the Chaldeans, and lived in Haran. And after his father died, God removed him from there into this land, in which you are now living. Yet he gave him no inheritance in it, not even a foot's length, but promised to give it to him in possession and to his posterity after him, though he had no child. And God spoke to this effect, that his posterity should be aliens in a land belonging to others, who would enslave them and ill-treat them four hundred years. But I will judge the nation which they serve, said God, and after that they shall come out and worship me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. So Abraham became the father of Isaac, and circumcised him on the eighth day, and Isaac became the father of Jacob and Jacob of the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarchs, jealous of Joseph, sold him into Egypt. But God was with him and rescued him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom before Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, who made him governor over Egypt and over all his household. Now there came a famine throughout all Egypt and Canaan and great affliction, and our fathers could find no food. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent forth our fathers the first time. And the second visit, Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and Joseph's family became known to Pharaoh. And Joseph sent and called to him Jacob, his father, and all his kindred, seventy-five souls. And Jacob went down to Egypt, and he died, himself and our fathers. And they were carried back to Shechem, and laid in the tomb that Abraham had bought for a sum of silver from the sons of Hamor and Shechem. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 21, Canticle 21, page 95. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Our final lesson this morning is from the Gospel according to St. John. As Jesus was talking to the woman at the well, his disciples came. They marveled that he was talking with a woman, but none said, What do you wish, or why are you talking with her? So the woman left with her water jar and went away into the city and said to the people, Come, see, a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the city and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples besought him, saying, Rabbi, eat! But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him food? And Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to accomplish his work. Do you not say, There are yet four months, then comes the harvest? I tell you, lift up your eyes. See how the fields are already white for harvest. 
He who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows, another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him. Because of the woman's testimony, he told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of your words that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Apostles' Creed, page 96, page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Oh, man. Suffrages B, page 98, page 98. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our prayers and supplications, which we offer before you for all members of your Holy Church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory, 
And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>